sure. 21 because we are green, trying to be green. Yes. Can I share my screen? Are you going to present right now? No, but it's like the like the feedback thing. Can I show it? The what part of me, honey? The feedback thing. You are doing it. You don't need to show me. I believe you completely. Okay. It's, it's just because we are not in a class. We have uh, guests and we have parents and we have uh, teachers from other uh, classes and levels. So that's why sharing only what, when you are going to present. Okay. I'm glad that Danny is here. I saw him going uh, walking uh, towards the classroom. So Danny, I'm glad that you're here and I'm, hope, I, I'm sure that you're going to do an awesome presentation. So it is 10.58. Let's see if Echo Generation is ready. Daniela Bonilla, Daniel Alfaro, and Lucas. Are you all here, guys? Hi, teacher, yes. So, Lucas, let's wait for Lucas. He still has one minute. Teacher, uh, the brother of Lucas put a message in the chat. Okay, thank you, Rick, for letting me know. I think he was looking for a charger or something like that. That, um, Okay, it's a Lucas mom, Doña Marja, who is here. Guys, um, Danny, Bonilla, Alfaro, can you go and see if Lucas is around? Because you cannot start till all your group is here, okay? You still have one minute, we can wait a little bit more for Lucas to be here, okay? Is Lucas there? I see him. Lucas is there, perfect. Your mom was a little bit worried about you, Lucas, because she didn't see you. There you are. Okay, are we all here, guys? Everybody here? <laughs> I hope so. So we're going to start. Echo Generation, Daniela Bonilla, Daniel Alfaro, and Lucas. Just uh, a another tip, guys, remember that when you are in groups, Body language, language is really important. Face in the camera and be there. Don't get distracted. Don't distract us from the presentation. If somebody else in your group is talking and you start doing something else that's distracting and they take points off as well, okay? So are you ready? Yes. Perfect, let me put you the time and you may start whatever you want. Thank you, Santiago. I don't see the presentation button there. Do you? So I stop the time. Perfect, you may start. Good morning. The name of our project is Echo Generator and it's made by Daniel Alfaro, Lucas Gonzalez, and Daniela Alfaro. How it started. This project started by reducing plastic. We thought that the Echo Talks would show how many plastic we use that can avoid using.
the echo blocks, the problem we wanted to solve. So most of the trash the like like you can put it inside and make it real hard and you can build stuff. We also build the chairs and different stuff. We wanted to take reduce all that trash we made we had and put it in there so we could make stuff and all that uh, plastic could eventually end up in the oceans and in ecosystems, not only the oceans, and it could affect the animals and other species. Why make eco bricks? Plastic produces microplastics. It also allows the sequestration of plastic, seal the plastic away, preventing the building up of toxic gases, and it is a fun way of low grade recycling. And they also are building resources. So how we make eco blocks? You use a clean water bottle, it's already been used, and then you you start putting trash on it and you push it in until it's really com compact. And when it's when all the stuff is in, you can, as I told you, build them and use them for different stuff. With the help of communities and teachers that we were able to collect 40 eco blocks. Major product to show. As a final result, we were able to build the type of table or bench made entirely of eco blocks. At, the, at first, it was very hard because we wanted to put all the bottles together with tape, but at the end, we made it, as you can see. How do we relate this to our science plan? In biology, going into biology, we're seeing ecosystems, so talking about how it will help us. Not only will less plastic, it will also protect our food sources. And also in chemistry, landforms. In chemistry, we can tell that this will help the landform. Plastic can release harmful chemicals into the surrounding soil, which can then seep into groundwater or other surrounding water sources and also the ecosystems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Amazing presentation. Thank you very much. Nice project. <laughs> Let's support your classmates. Yay. Um, Claudia, did you have any questions for this group? No. Yes. Uh, First of all, thank you, Daniela, Daniela A, Daniela B, and Lucas for this uh, extraordinary presentation. Uh, I love this subject, and I, uh, I'm uh, really, that it really pull, it's, it's in my heart. It's all related with contamination and plastic is really kind of one of my favorite uh, subjects. And I like the the, the idea that you use um, like naturally, you go and involve community. So. You have a lot of process there, and it's also kind of idea that can continue not only for for a process for a project in class. It's a really extraordinary idea that can grow in like a seat or like a Pandora box, <laughs> but it's really but in a good way. So my question is: uh, You said that you uh, made forty eco blocks. So my first question is uh, materials, right? Uh, from uh, how did you get the materials? Yeah, I know that you said the community, but which type of materials? Who gave you the materials? How far did you get the materials? Tell me everything. So most of the time uh, we asked classes and they gave us some, some plastic bottles and they gave mm -hmm. us a lot of plastic bottles filled already eco blocks or needed to fill. And most, most of the teachers helped us to get to our 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 goal and okay. and we build the cool thing. You can build really cool things. If people have made house with echo blocks and yeah. you can make it. So the community work with you with you like the focal point of, of, of gathering everything and, and create your your bench. 
uh, made of blocks, but you also reached another challenge that was that was a little bit hard for the bottom, right? So I, I also an extra step also is kind of uh, maybe try to make it, as you said, more comfy and also more likable. Because if you can create your own likable things from your own trash, you, from your trash, you don't have to throw trash and it doesn't become trash anymore. So it's just like a comment or highlight in your own results that I'm giving to you. So I think uh, it's really extraordinary to think uh, that like a, like an extra. Um, yeah, that's thank you. <laughs> thank you, Claudia. I have a few questions for you guys. <laughs> things uh, we have the time for it i'm going to ask you guys um did you actually were able or had the time to do at least one echo block yourselves no teacher and the time okay. was short so we asked the teacher sandy if she could help us so she was very kind and called the library of santa ana and they gave us some a eco blocks and also they asked parents of the school that made eco blocks so we also re collect them from there so did you build your bench or your table from donations from tolly's community you said and from who else from a biblioteca in santa ana but like, uh, they have important details yes they have some eco blocks that were made or donated for by the school some i think four and fifth graders and i don't know if uh, lower graders also work on eco blocks a few years ago i don't remember if it was last year or the year before they donated them to uh, the municipality of santana and then you the biblioteca pardon me and then you ask them because they have them there to give them back so you can actually use it is that correct I have a task for you. Okay. okay. I want you to echo block. What? Make your own echo block. It can be one built by the three of you. With help, you can ask. I have been collecting plastics for you guys. So you can actually start building your own echo block because I think it's really important um that uh, you go through the experience on making your own echo block okay to learn how to do it best and to give us uh, some pointers maybe i would like to start making my own echo blocks and you have the experience so you can tell me what works what doesn't work okay let's have that as a project for next term because i would like to see some echo blocks made by you <laughs> okay, we have uh, a few people here that are with us. Um, them, if they would like to participate and ask questions as, as well. I cannot see everybody, but I'm assuming that there are some teachers or parents. Um, and if somebody else have a question, uh, you are welcome, guys, to ask. We have one minute. Anybody else would uh, like to ask? A question to the group or even uh, Claudia if you want to add a, an extra comment or a question just a quick one uh, uh, guys would you like to try to create with your uh, echo blocks uh, that you will create uh, do for your teacher Marcella maybe some new design a part of a bench you can check on different websites you can do a little kajak you can you can do art you can do many, many things. So looking forward to see if that the block could become like uh, something yeah. else. Mm -hmm. What about, could be? What could be? Have you checked online? But you can yeah. do. We thought about making a lamp. We saw that with an eco block we can do a lamp. So that was also an idea, but we couldn't make it. So now in the second second term, we could try to do it. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I don't see Lucas. Can we have Lucas back because he's part of the group? Perfect. Guys, thank you very much. It was a really, really nice project. Let's support this group. They answered the question really nicely too. Thank you guys. Really proud. And you see Daniel Faro, everything went really nice. 
So, okay, so next group is going to be mobile research station. You have time, guys, to get organized, get everything um, ready. I know you're here at the ICU, and I, I know that you have the model there with you. So please just let me know when you're ready. You're supposed to start at 11.15. You have, let's say, two minutes to get organized. If you are ready, we can start right away. Mauricio, Matias, Connor, are you here, guys? Yes, we're here. My computer is having technical issues, so I'm going to present using Matias. Okay, um, there is feedback, noise feedback in the back. So if somebody has the microphone on while you turn it on, please ask the person to turn it off so we can hear you guys, okay? Let's give it a try. Let's see if now we can hear you better. Before starting, let's make a sound uh, sound check, please. Let's unmute. Matias, perfect. Say something so to see if we can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Somebody uh, needs to talk, please. Hey, teacher, hi, do you hear me? Hey. Now we can hear you. Now we're good. <laughs> okay, you may start. Just let me know when, so I start the time. Okay, I am Matthias, and today I am presenting uh, about the mobile research station. The, the, this was made by Connor, Mauricio, and Matthias. Problem. Investigation camps and research station require systems, processes, and, infra and infrastructure that harm the environment. Many people think, why? The thing is that when, when the constructors build the, the research station, they, they cut down many trees and destroy uh, many places so they can build and clear the area. Solution. An eco-friendly, self-sustaining research station, research station that allows scientists to investigate animals, plants, and or fungi in their natural habitat without harming it in any way. Our 3D model was created, well, very simple with a 3D app that we had on our computers. So we made a simplistic design to show you the basics and, or the basic idea of what we were planning on doing. We also did another 3D model in a house building, in a house building um, simulator, which allowed us to get um, a better perspective of what we were gonna have and how big it was gonna be. Our power source. Our power source is going to be used by solar panels that would be most likely powered by one to two solar panels or one to five, depending on how big it is. And we would have solar batteries to store the power. Meanwhile, it is nighttime, so we can use it whenever anybody is back from studying, just in case. Okay, the mobile research station is designed to be eco-friendly, which comes in the name, it will be mobile, and it will be eco-friendly in any kind of biome that will be used in desert, jungle, forest, near rivers, beaches, 
it, as you can see, it'll be it'll be able to withstand any kind of situation in any kind of country or um, biome. For example, a desert like the Sahara, it'll be able to withstand it, and you'll be able to use it. How is the mobile research station eco-friendly? Well, there are a couple of ways that make the station eco-friendly, starting with the soap and washing supplies used in the station. These are going to be eco-friendly and non-toxic and will not kill any plants or animals that accidentally consume them. There is no infrastructure required for the station to work, which prevents habitat destruction and will give the crew a better chance to study the area. If located near a fresh water source and flat area where supplies can be dropped, the station can act in a self-sustainable way. Solar power, by using solar panels and solar batteries in the station, it can have electricity provided without harming the environment. Solar energy is one of the renewable sources of energy, and the station is also built in a way that minimizes power consumption. By having windows and keeping most appliances compact, it reduces the power consumption of the station. Supplies. The station will have lights, satellite internet outlets, a small refrigerator with frozen food and an oven. The crew will be regularly provided with food and other supplies once they run out. It will also have a ceiling fan or an electrical heater if the mission is in a desert or in other hot environment or a cold environment. The station will have a bed for the crew who is inhabiting it to sleep and a desk with a chair as a comfortable workspace. The crew will be provided with a bucket as a sink and will be instructed the use of it, such as washing their hands and other functions of the sink. And it will also be used to collect water from a river or a lake. Necessary requirements of the station. The station will be specifically equipped for the mission. It will have more solar panels and batteries if the crew is studying a nocturnal animal and less if the crew is studying a diurnal animal, plant or fungi, sorry, fungus. And no solar batteries if the mission is in the Arctic tundra or Antarctica during the summer, because in the, that far north and that far south, during the summer, there are 24 hours of daylight, meaning that no solar batteries will be required. Water will come with the regular supply drops if the mission is in a desert and rainwater collectors if the mission is in a rainforest. The station will need to have a supply chain to reload on supplies, like food and a water purifying and filtering powder once they run out. Preferably, the supplies will be dropped from a plane using crates to a, in a clearing or a flat area near the station. It needs to have a reliable source of clean water, such as a river, a lake, rain, or snow. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be talking about the process of making the prototype. Okay. Okay, I cut the wood so I could make the research station. I glued all the wood together and made the, the station staircases, walls, and furniture. Later, I glued the staircases. Connor made the room back, cleaning robot desk, etc. Okay, I glued the moss to the sticks and then I painted the window and glued it and, glued it. Uh, and made the chicken out of cardboard. Kitchen, sorry, it was a problem. Okay. Out of cardboard. Okay. Okay. I, I glued the bed together and then glued it to the floor of the station. After that, I, I and Connor, me and Connor, uh, glued the bathroom together and then glued the toilet. Then, lastly, I exposed I exposed some cables so they could connect to the lead. I made the base for the panels and proceeded to glue the solar panel to the base and glue the base to a wall of the station. And now, uh, sorry. Now, 
the prototype as it is in its finished state will be shown. Give me a moment here. Where is it to stop presenting? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, hi. Uh, I'm here with my cell phone. Uh, here is the maquette we made. Broken. The prototype. Here we can see plants. A functional lab, a circuit. And the solar panel actually produces electricity. Look, see, this is the LED, and it lights up. Nice. We use the extra Beautiful. space we had to be able to build a small garden or a top place. Beautiful, guys. Mauricio, you're muted. Mauricio, you're muted. Now. We cannot hear. Just going to stop the time. So you fix the technical problem. Talk to us, guys. If you're talking, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now we can hear you. Perfect. A research station doesn't have to harm the environment. Ideally, the station can be eco-friendly and self-sustainable. Adapted to the modern times and revolutionary in its own right, ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the mobile research station. Woo! <laughs> Beautiful, guys, amazing. You did such a wonderful job. It was amazing. Thank you very much for letting us be part of that amazing presentation and prototype. I want to go to that mobile research station to tell you the truth, guys. <laughs> Claudia, any comments, questions for this group? Um, no, Matthias, I called, called your, your other uh, classmates. Matthias, uh, Mauricio and Connor should be here with you. Can you call them, please? Perfect, Connor, that is walking over there. Connor, come in so you can hear Claudia's comments and questions. Hi. Thank you, guys. Hi. Okay. Hi, hi. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you, the three of you, for this uh, excellent presentation. You uh, uh, achieved uh, in, many, in many levels uh, what is uh, kind of expected uh, uh, in higher level of, <laughs> of research. So it's, it's really, really interesting to see your process of thinking uh, and, and uh, how, this come, how this became real in a prototype, right? Uh, so my first question for you guys is um, how uh, how did you get inspired for this idea? How did this idea come to your minds? What did you see that they said we have to go for this? What what okay. was? Well, uh, I was thinking because I moved here like uh, at the at the in this trimester I moved here to this and I had to the same fair and I thought and thought what can I do? And then I thought a mobile research station. Then I asked Connor, and then Mauricio joined the school, and he wanted to join the project. And I said, "Okay, join it." Now, yes, from my own perspective, because I am relatively new to Tolis, and I joined the school in the middle of the semester, then that means I was kind of in a bit of a rush with the STEAM fair. I had to join a group or start one, but. Well, those were the two options that were provided me by teacher Marcela. However, the option of creating my own project, since I joined that, that would mean crunch time, a lot of it. So I went with the best choice, which is joining a group. 
I was provided with the list of all the groups in Junior 1A. And well, I thought the mobile research station was the most interesting one. So here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank that's, you, Marie. That's, that's, that's good. That's good to see the process. And also, uh, it's interesting to do, do the three of you look very good together, working very good together. And that also is, is shown in, in your presentation and in your final product, that, by the way, is wonderful. Also, you thought in different weathers, in different types of sources, with the project, with the prototype, you found something that is very important that was some kind of difficulties, right? That was with the kitchen. What happened there? You said that you have you have troubles with the kitchen, or did I listen wrong? You had some no, troubles with we, the kitchen. We didn't. We had to work with what we could, and mm -hmm. since I since I was working with the clay, since I had to make the desk, I had to make um, part of the trees as well. Uh -huh. um, we had we had to use the time we had, so we had to make uh, the kitchen up here, but we had to make it simplistic since we didn't have much time yeah. to add to oh, I, I see, I see, Under, I understand, understand now. Okay, so um, uh, what what would you do? Let's say that again, I'm super, super rich Hernandez company here, uh, paying for many prototypes and also maybe some, some uh, uh, research stations near where you are located now. So my concern, in order to give you this budget to you now, raining, raining money, will be what to do with the toilet waste that you said that is, uh, you said that you will. The thing with the station is that infrastructure requires heavy machinery and equipment to be brought into the wild to make plumbing. Yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. And the station, since it's eco-friendly and self-sustainable, specifically avoids that. So the solution that we have are chemical toilets that don't oh, require any it. plumbing. I see. I understand. Yes, because we can them. avoid to go to the toilet anyway. Yeah, I understand. Yes, exactly. Okay. And that have chemicals in them to <laughs> decompose feces quicker. Oh, yeah. you're in well, There's always the yeah. good old pee into the woods. Well, I have to congratulate you with all this, uh, all this um, mm, uh, extreme detail. Uh, information. The only, uh, if you allow me to say, it's not a, it's not a, a criticism. It's just a constructive thought regarding your own presentation. I think you, the three of you, had a very good stamina. You, you can present and talk what you think. So next time, maybe you can use less words in your present in, in your presentation and maybe more, more, more pictures of your own prototype or maybe keywords because you had you had it you you can speak very nicely so you don't have to read that will be uh, even more even more 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 good that is that it is now so con congrats is not a criticism it's just a humble suggestion that has so to do with so me it may be a psychology problem uh oh, really? i just write too much ah but this is yeah you, little by little <laughs> little by little <laughs> thank you thank you for the honesty no? Thank you, Claudia. Thank you guys for your candor and for sharing everything so truthful with us. Beautiful presentation. Congratulations. You should be proud. I know you have been working Thank really you. hard. Thank you very much. Good job. Let's support you. Amazing. Amazing job. Now we are going to go to the next presentation. It's 11.31. Since we started a little bit earlier and we have a short um, presentations, really concise, I gave you guys five extra minutes because I didn't want to interrupt the presentation. It was really good. So now we have William with to solve a fishy problem. William, are you here, honey? Will? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I'm just going to put the time and you let me know. It's so funny, guys, because I'm here in the office and somebody put the TV with this conference and I can hear myself in the stereo on a big TV. It is kind of 
weird to tell you the truth. Like if it's just it's cheering. Fit water in a stadium. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay, Will, you start sharing when you're ready. You may start. Okay. Overfishing. Overfishing is something that people do when they fish and they essentially take too much for the population of fish to be sustainable, as in the fish don't, don't reproduce enough for it to be a good number. And we should stop this because the fish, when they go poo, they, they help coral grow. And coral is important because it takes carbon. So also salmon, the population has dropped a lot over the years thanks to overfishing. And there isn't very much of a possibility of making overfishing stop because it's a really popular thing. People just get a lot of fish and they don't bother to realize the consequences. So we could make a kind of enclosure for fish, a fish zoo of sorts, where there's three chambers, each for a type of fish and a reproductive area so that they can reproduce and grow fruitful. And you can also approach these sites to learn more. Thanks. Thank you, William. Before you stop sharing, can we go back to the graphs that you show us there? Um, because I would love to uh, hear you telling us about that information that you have in there. There are some graphs, I don't remember if it's the second or third slide. That one. Okay, can you tell us about that one? Well, the individual colors of the lines in the graph are places. Red is Georgia, blue is the Puget Sound, and gray is the WA and BC coast. And that's for the Chinook salmon. And its survival rate has dropped from four to one in a lot of cases. Really interesting. As well as the steelhead. Perfect. Thank you, William. Really nice uh, presentation. I love the prototype that you are suggesting to do. Um, I'm guessing this is an open sea. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Prototype again, William. Can you share it with me, please, or with us? Will, can you share the slides again and go back to which one, uh, Flor, that one? The prototype, that one. The prototype. Okay, let's go to the prototype. Excellent. Thank you so much. Flor? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, William. Let's support William. Awesome presentation, William. I just wanted to, to talk about the prototype. Were you able to make a model of the prototype that you have in mind? Unfortunately, no. I didn't have enough materials and I was changing my mind a lot of times about what I should do. I know. I know that uh, you were struggling a little bit because it's a big, huge problem. And uh, I, I saw what you wrote in there that, yeah, it was maybe too big. 
Um, Will, can you uh, fix the camera so we can see you, not only your forehead? Because uh, Claudia, I'm thinking that you have a question for Will. <laughs> yes. Well, William, it has <laughs> been really interesting to see uh, and learn about uh, overfishing because if somebody comes again in the street and uh, see you talking and got interested, I have to say that they will be very hooked in the way you speak and in the way that you present information. This is very important. You know, you have to learn how to sell from what you what you what you give. So I have to congratulate you because uh, it's a short presentation, but it's very very good, and the way you express it uh, uh, is really really nice. It's a very nice gift that you have, uh, and I have to highlight it because it's really really nice to see. Also, the way that you uh, uh, kind of elaborate the idea of, of overfishing. So uh, before going to the prototype too, I would like to ask you, what do you think about overfishing in Costa Rica? Is it a big problem? Do you know about it? Uh, have you heard something? Do you have any idea? Overfishing is a pretty big problem, but not really in Costa Rica. It's more in places where there are larger companies. I see. Uh -huh. Well, uh, yes, overfishing is a big problem uh, and is very well known for, comp for uh, uh, species that are kind of uh, sustaining uh, uh, huge stocks, uh, right? Like sardine, like anchovy. But Costa Rica, despite this tropical uh, system, had also some problems with overfishing with uh, species like sharks, maybe. And yeah, that's why it's so important that you highlight this topic. So that's why I'm, I, I made this, this question. It's really, really interesting and important to, to, to say. Um, what about this prototype? How, how um, did you draw the whole uh, slide? Did you took it from other place and kind of make improvements? Uh, or did you draw it on by yourself? That was your, your draw, your prototype uh, slide. Yeah, I drew it electronically. All right, all right. So this idea of enclosure film, fish of fish soup, I have to say that is fantastic. And I have to say that it could be a f the future for some, maybe not with salmon or, or a tuna because they have the different cycles of life, but definitely with important species or maybe with native species from Costa Rica. So I'm really like to thank you for this uh, beautiful uh, idea. And I think if you, if you feel that is something that uh, is, uh, it really uh, calls your heart in order to do it. Uh, I, I, I uh, uh, kind of um, cheer for you in order to, to make a better prototype uh, for, for sharing uh, with uh, some other people. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Claudia. Thank you, William. Really nice presentation. Thank you for answering the questions. Let's support William. Good job. Um, Ignacio had a question for me. Ignacio, um, you are going to present after lunch, honey, just to let you know, okay, according to the agenda. Thank you, Ignacio. So now we have self-watering plants by Santiago Sanchez and semi-automatic, semi. Thank you. Yes, that's true. You changed the name and it's semi-automatic self-watering plants is that yes. correct yes okay okay i will be sharing screen right now uh is daniel going to present as well with you uh yes okay so let's have daniel and santiago please uh pin so we can see them both okay teacher just a second santi let's see because i cannot see you or daniel so I'm going to ask, um, I don't know if it's Eva or Flor. Perfect. Thank you. Um, we have a, Hi, um, thank you, Danny. Before you start, guys, uh, there is another judge in here. Sorry, not judge, guest, expert guest. <laughs> but, but. They just join us and he's going to uh, be present for this beautiful presentation. Uh, Tomas, Tomas de Camino, welcome. Oh, your husband. 
<laughs> yes. So let me introduce Tomas uh, before you start presenting, guys. Okay. Um, Dr. Tomas de Camino is a researcher, doctor in mathematical biology from the University of Alberta, Canada, master's degree in computer science from the Technological Institute of Costa Rica, bachelor's degree in biology from the University of Costa Rica. He has postdoctorates from uh, Penn State USA and the University of Alberta. He has been a professor at the University of Costa Rica, El Instituto Tecnológico de Costa Rica, Veritas University, and Lead University, teaching courses from design to mathematics and advanced science. He is also teaching now at Tolis uh, Computer Science, and he was uh, the one who um, gave you the workshop about micro ignites. Let's welcome Tomas. Thank you for joining us. Okay, that is a lot of reports. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, let me put the time. So um, I see Santiago Gomez, but Santi is not from this presentation. I need Santiago Sanchez and Daniel. Um, I'm giving you a pointer to, uh, I don't know if it's Flor or Eva, who are doing this. Okay. Should I start? Just a second, uh, Santi, because we are live and it is important that, um, it is important that uh, we have the pointers to the people who is actually talking. Yeah. So I think we have a little bit of problem, technical problem. I floor should we start? Should I start? Un momento, Marce, que ya estamos resolviendo un tema. Marce, no sé dónde está Tomás. ¿Está Tomás conectado? Eh, me dijeron que se había conectado, por eso lo introduje. Hice la introducción, no, porque me dijeron que estaba aquí. Estoy preguntando si está Tomás. No lo Tomás. veo conectado. Ok, let me ask. No. Tomás is not here. Daniel, activa su cámara. Santi, mute yourself, please. Okay. Thank you, Dani. Dani, you need to turn on the camera. Okay, we're having a little bit of technical problems. I think we have is Daniel Núñez. Apparently, Tomas was not here yet. Somebody uh, mentioned it in the chat, and I went with introduction. <laughs> well, things happen. That's OK. Um, are we ready? We are missing Daniel Nunez. Dani, are you here, honey? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Let me put the time, and you may start, guys. I'm very nervous. Right now. Okay. Don't be. My name is Santiago Sanchez. My name is Daniel. And this is semi-automatics of worrying plants. They introduction. Those can water, no, those can plants water themselves. Well, no, in some cases. But we can prove it's wrong in a strange way. We already know that plants can't normally water themselves, but can they water another plant? What do we know? Some plants need a lot of water. The normally plants can water themselves. And we need especially like can quantities of water for uh, other plants. Materials of the first prototype. When plastic bottles put water after making the plant, brass for plants, and I think that has a lot of sharpness 
or something very hot. Okay, basically the first prototype of the semi-automatic self-warning plant was technically a failure because it was not like, it doesn't self-water, it's a draining system. And I can show it here. Give me a second. This was the, the first prototype that has grown no water. Here's a quick image of the first, the first prototype. The problem of the first prototype is because it just have a draining system. Technically a self watering plant, but we have to modify it. Materials for the final prototype. Put water after making the prototype. I think that has a lot of sharpness or something very hot. Two of the first prototypes and cardboard and tape. I have the final prototype with me uh, now, so I can show it here. Here's the final prototype. Basically, uh, as you can see here, when and where is my mouse? It, there's holes in the pot. That when the when this pot is overflowing, the water that is overflowing, it will go out and give. To, oh, sorry. Give me a second. It will go to this uh, pot here, so it can water it. Here's a quick diagram of how it was made, and the solution. I already said it. So then you can use it. The solution. We will put plants in a plastic bottle that have holes in the bottom. So when the water is overflowing, it doesn't overflow. And it can give water to the other plants and other stuff is modified. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you. Thank you guys. Really nice presentation. Let's support Santiago and Daniel. I hope you awesome. Like Semi-automatic self-watering plants. I got the name now. <laughs> yep. Santi, let's stop sharing, honey. By the way, I can you show how it works in life. Of course. Yes. Firstly, I need to look up. And you can see here. I will water this part of the plant here. Give me a second. Leave here. I'm going to put in the big screen. What? Just a second, I want to put it in big screen. Perfect. 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 Like this. So you're I going to be in big screen so we can see it better. Awesome. I water this. The little things of water, it goes to the other one there. Nice. And even if it's a rush, it can be good. Look. More water. Water procedure. And that's all. really nice. Really nice. Thank you, Santiago and Daniel. I really like your prototype. Any questions? Awesome. So I'm just going to wait for uh, Flor to take away the big screen. I'll be back. Especially now that Santi is not here. I am back. Thank God, no. Whoa, it's okay. okay. Santi, we're going to mute. Yeah. Now I'm the one who is big. I I am the spot spot spotlight. So can we change that? Is it me? I think Flor is working on it. Okay. So let's wait just for a second so we can see also Claudia and. Uh, both Santiago Sanchez and Daniel, because Claudia um, is going to ask beautiful questions to these bo boys. Not well, Santiago Gomez, Santiago Sanchez. Just a second, Claudia. Let's have the correct students in here. Mm -hmm. Santiago Sanchez and Daniel Nunez. Okay. We still are good on time. There's Santiago Sanchez, and now we need Daniel. Perfect. Claudia, please tell us. Yes. Well, uh, thank you so much for this uh, uh, awesome presentation. Um, I think uh, uh, it's very important to, to um, throw yourself out and try prototypes. 
and uh, describe what are the um, good things, the pros and the cons on, on, on everything and uh, own it and say, yes, this was a failure uh, because sometimes uh, in science, the people like to show just the perfect thing like Hollywood movie, but then you have a lot of things that are before and they are very important. So uh, uh, I really uh, congratulate you for that to show the first, why it was a failure and, uh, and now the second and why it's working. But my question is, where can we use this prototype? Is working, it works for, does it work for uh, all the type of plants? Uh, well, uh, it depends on yes. the plant. Ah. Like if it's a lot, it's, if it's a, a plant that needs a lot of water, it's very good. But if it's a plant that doesn't need a lot of water, it's not that good because if it's, if, if it's raining, the water will like the pot on top will throw a lot of water and probably the pot on above the pot, uh, up pot will die of drowning. So it depends it's on the Is Costa Rica a raining place? Yeah. So uh, if I going to, if you are going to sell or just to offer this alternative of semi automatic watering plant system and beyond to the people for, like a solution, how can, uh, wh where can we use it? Wh where do you think that we can use it? How, well, how indoors, outdoors, when the people travel well, we can, in an Airbnb? Like, in a garden, in a garden it will be very good because like you just need to water a little bit. Like you, you have a water bottle here, you just put a little bit and it's okay. And even with raining, because the pot here, like the above pot has including a draining system. So I think it will not drown a lot. I see, I see. Well, yes. I also would like to suggest that it could be uh, in, included in indoors, especially when the people travel. Because if you have, uh, if you have plants that you cannot water, uh, you can maybe think in a, an additional system for supply water uh, in very, in very slow way. And then you will have a very good solution uh, that joins with the projects of your other uh, um, class camarades uh, 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 related to okay. recycling. So I think it's a really interesting project and you can also uh, suggest, like, suggest it as a recycling idea. So you both, no? So yeah, thank really you for that. Recycling because it's made out of uh, cardboard and plastic. Mm. Very yeah. ah. So a lot of alternatives coming from this. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Diego and Daniel. Nice prototypes. Nice presentation. Good job, guys. Thank you for paying attention and asking questions. <laughs> Thank you, Santi. Okay. Um, we have the next presentation now. It is Ecologic House by Alicia and Catalina. Are you ready, guys? Yes, teacher. Perfect. <laughs> so let me just put the time in here. OK, um, apparently Tomas is now here with us. Are you ready to do the introduction, Tomas? Somebody told me that you were here. Oh, that's what I understood in the chat. I'm sorry. I am not going to present you again, but welcome and thank you for being here. Um, we are going to start with this presentation. Ecologic House. Thank you, Tomas. And girls, you may start. Okay, I'm going to share. Perfect. Here. Ecologic House. It's a rainwater purifying system by Alicia and Catalina. Problem. The problem is that many people don't have access to drinking water. And there is a lot of water wasted in when it rains. Then our solution 
is that to collect the rainwater in some rain barrels. And then since rainwater has chemicals, we would use a homemade filter to make the water safe to use and or drink it. The first picture was your face idea, but then we decided to put the rain barrels and the filter in an attic inside the house. And we also added solar panels. Um, here, we investigated about people with access to water in Costa Rica and people with access to potable water in Costa Rica. So, like the first graph shows that around 400,000 people don't have access to potable water. That's 8.2% of the people. And 4,500,000 people have access, and that's 91.8%. That graph shows that like, the amount of people with access to a water source, that's 99%. Amount of water used in our daily lives. Um, person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water per day. And that's why we're including power projects, uh, a system that purifies the toilet water so that we have like an extra water source. Then, did they have some ideas for the filter and rain barrels? We want the filter to filtrate the water with cotton, gravel, thin gravel, charcoal, and sand in that order. And this was the process of making the house. We used some acrylics to make the house and we started by cutting them. But since it was a long process, we decided to cut them using the laser cutter. And Alicia was the one in charge of the house and I was the one in charge to make the filter. And these are the end results of the house and the filter. But we also brought them to school. So when we finish the presentation, we're going to show them. Well, thank you. Thank you. Let's wait for the what you're going to show us then. <laughs> Do uh, you want the questions now, or you want to show us uh, what you brought to school? Okay. The house. Okay. okay. Just one second. I, I want to I want to put you on the on the big screen. Just a second, please. Okay. So this is the house. Perfect. The roof is made out of cardboard and, and the rest is made of acrylic painted with white paint. Then this is our filter. The bottom part is cotton. Then we have gravel. Then there is the thin gravel. Then over here, I don't know if you can see it, but over here there's charcoal. And then this top part is all sand. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, girls. Beautiful presentation. Let's support um, Kata and Alicia. Really nice and well done. Thank you, guys. Um, now that Tomas is here, um, Tomas, do you have any questions um, for Alicia and Catalina? Uh, hi, great presentation, great project. Uh, have you tried the filter actually? Have you poured some water and see how, how clean it comes out? Uh, we haven't quite tried it, but if you want, I can make the holes and try it and I take a video of it. <laughs> that would be nice if you do it to see, just just pour in some water that is not so clean and then figure and see how much how much uh, is at, the, at the end. So, but, but great project. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tomas, uh, for your question. Um, uh, I was just going to ask you about the prototype. I'm so sorry, guys. Let me just uh, close the window because I have some students next to my window mm, talking really loud. Sorry for that. <laughs> they forgot that we are here and they are the ones who were presenting before, so they forgot. So about the prototype, because I know um, that you showed me that you had a little bit of problems with the prototype. Can you tell us a little bit about it? The house prototype. So when we were going to print that, when we were going to cut them in, in a laser cutter, and we had some trouble with the measurements of the roof, so that's, that's why, why it's, it's in cardboard, cardboard and not a acrylics. But the rest is from acrylics. Yeah. This is all the acrylics, like some spear acrylics the school had. That's why it's like a hard plastic. But since we had some trouble with the measurements of well, this little part over here was going to be the roof part, but we had some trouble because we didn't quite know how much it would measure. So we gave the teacher about the wrong measurements for the roof only, and that's why we ended up doing it with cardboard. But you were resourceful. <laughs> Do you find something for the uh, prototype now to present? Uh, my suggestion would be to keep trying to have the correct measurements and do the acrylic roof because if you're going to work with water, um, well, well, we know what happened with cardboard, eh? Yes, yeah. And also to try the filter, really important. Yeah. That's vital to your, um, your presentation, to your data, to see it if it works, okay? Yes. Yeah. Thank you guys. I don't know if Tomas, did you have any other comment? No, great job. And, and as Marcela said, just, just make sure you, you create the proper roof. If not, it's not going to work with the water, right? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Let's support your classmates. Awesome. So next we have, and what time is it? Are we going good with the time still? It's 12.05, yes. I think these are, these are very entertaining presentations. Santi, what was that, honey? I couldn't hear these you. These are very entertaining presentations. They are, eh? Everybody should be really proud. Thank you, Santi. Upcycling, and Eva is ready. <laughs> Upcycling plastic bottles can change the world. Perfect, Eva. You let me know, honey, when I start the talk. Okay, let me, give me a second because um, I don't, um, I have the presentation, but it's like loading. Okay, that's fine. So, um, while we wait for it to load, so we can set something. Uh, Eva was working on a prototype that it was going really, really, um, going to be really fun because it involved uh, her pet, little dog. Teacher, it was a so mess. He didn't it, want to go. <laughs> and she showed me yesterday and the little dog was not cooperating with the, uh, with the project. Perfect, Eva. I okay. think we are now kind of seeing, we, we're still perfect. Now we can see it. Okay. So I'm just going to start the time. Yeah. You may start, honey. Um, so today I will present upcycling plastic bottles can, cha can change the world. 
Um, okay. What is upcycling? Upcycling is when you have something, a material that you already use and you do something new with it. Like um, here, you can do with a plastic bottle, a like a pot. Brand. Yeah, that. Uh, what is the problem? The problem is that um, there are a lot of plastic bottles at the sea and um, a lot of animals are dying and well, some people recycle, but um, there is like a new way you can do, like, is recycling, upcycling is like recycling, but in a different way. So, um, how is going to change the world? You can't, like, you can't change the world, but you can change the community. Um, like, um, you, if you start, like, um, upcycling and doing a lot of crafts, you will, you will inspire another people and that people will do that and it will keep doing it like that. Um, why should we do this? Um, because a lot of plastic bottles are ending up at the ocean and animals are dying because they eat them. Um, what happens if we don't stop the production of plastic? Well, in, in some years, the ocean will be full of plastic bottles and, we, and all the fishes will die and everything. Um, what can we do? We can do like um, this crafts. Um, and here is the, oh wait, here is the dog house that I did. I, I did a lot of, um, like a lot of um, things, but I finished um, with this. Like I put like a plastic bottle like that and in a corner of my room there is is there but and then like my dog is so scared of anything that he didn't go out so i went out of my room and, and he he didn't went out so like to try so yeah it's like a little cage um i also did these things i don't know if you can see them this is like decorating thing. Um, wait. Oh, nice. Oh my god. This is like a little thing to put in. Um, this is also enough. Um, this is like a little lamp. Eva, can you show us in the camera the lamp we couldn't see it? Here. Nice. And this is um this is like a little with um plastic bottles like at the the end of plastic bottles. Um you can put markers and everything. Really nice. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Eva. I would love to, uh, Flor, if you can uh, pin Eva so she can show us in big the crafts that she made, but she did a nice, beautiful presentation. Let's support Eva. Amazing, Eva. Really nice. Good job with the crafts. Eva, can you show us again your crafts now that you are really big so we can see them yeah. better? Okay. Okay. So here, can you see them? Yes. Like this. Now. Really nice, Eva. I, I'm really curious about the ones that you decorated a lot. 
The ones that have lots of colors? Those ones. What are those? They are like decorating hats, like with plastic oh, bottles. Oh, nice. I thought it was the, like the lampshade. They can use, be, use also yeah. like clay. Yeah. Well, I didn't did them. My grandma makes a lot of crafts. So oh, nice. um, I grabbed some things that she did. So yeah. But I know she did the one that has the um the compact disc or the C D. Oh yeah, I did this one. So you did it at school. Can we see that one closer? This one or this one? Yes, that one. That looks yes, not that close. There really nice, eh? And I, I told Eva that it looks also like a glass. It can be used like a glass. It looks like yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Eva. Really nice and well done. Crafts, beautiful. If you want to change the world, is we have to change ourselves. And by the looks of it, you're doing all sorts of things, but not just because you want to do them, but actually you're using them. So that's kind of cool. And that's the way you change the world, right? You have to change yourself and then you're going to you're going to have some other people see what you do and get all excited about doing the same thing. We have a bunch of plastic bottles around here. We might as well just do some of the crafts you are doing. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, thank Eva. You. Thank you, Tomas. <laughs> um, I don't know if any of the teachers that are here with us have a question or a comment for Eva. Jennifer, now that I can see you. <laughs> and you caught me distracted, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. It's because well, that, well, that's part of the human, <laughs> the human evidence that we teachers get distracted as well. <laughs> nice job, Eva. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank and you. I, I would disagree with the thing that well, you don't need to do a, a whole revolution to change the world. Small changes change the world. <laughs> I, I have a question, Eva. Um, did doing all these crafts make you think twice about buying another plastic bottle? Because you can only do so many crafts and have so many bottles on your desk. Did you find you bought, you wanted to buy fewer bottles? Well, um, I, I can't stop like buying plastic bottles, but I'm like trying, we are trying to don't buy too much because I had my dad bring me like two bags full of plastic bottles that he finds in his office. And so, um, and it was like a half of the um, plastic bottles that they use at the office. So yeah, but like in Coca-Cola or that bottles, sometimes it's, it brings like that you can go um, give them away and like you drink everything and then you go and give them away to don't like, and they use it again. Mm -hmm. They return it, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Angela, for the question. Thank you, Eva. And yes, that comment, actually, Eva was having trouble finding bottles because I think <laughs> they don't have much at home. So that's why we decided to collect here at school but then suddenly we went uh, virtual and I still have the bottles here waiting for you, Eva. Okay, you just decided uh, to come in and donate bottles, which is good because we are going to do something with them. Okay, thank you, Eva, again. Uh, good job, honey, really nice. And it's 12, 16. Oh, we are going, doing so good with the time, guys. I think we're going to have extra time at the end. So how can we help decrease global warming by Claudio? Claudio, are you ready? Yes. Awesome. Let me just put the time and oh, oh I'm running out of battery. That's not good. I didn't bring my charger, guys. So I guess then I'm going to uh, ask somebody else to take the time after this. Thank that you. is not convenient. It is not. So let's pay attention to Claudio. He's going to tell us about how can we decrease global warming. Go ahead, Claudio. Global warming by Claudio. 
global warming is one of the most dangerous problems or maybe the most dangerous. The human gases increase and makes effect on greenhouse atmosphere. How can we help decrease global warming? Use the off switch, change our light bulb, use less hot water, recycle, plant a tree. Materials, more recycled paper, one green marker, one cutter, one glue, one bicycle lamp, one ruler, one scissor. Okay, the solution. Recycle paper, use recycled paper to make helpful, helpful things. Put in one box on every section of solids to recycle paper already used that already put it. Here's one of the things you can do with recycled paper. You can do a lamp. And here's one of the boxes I put at school. Carbon dioxide and global warming. Carbon dioxide causes 80% of global warming. Between 2030 and 2050, climate change is expected to cause approach approximately 250,000 additional deaths per year. Carbon dioxide is a gas that absorbs, absorbs solar energy and hits close to Earth's surface rather than just letting it escape into space. And that's one greenhouse effect. Here I did a solid survey asking people questions. Okay, this is a global warming diagram. Above half the solar radiation is absorbed by the Earth's surface and warms it by the sun. Infrared radiation is emitted from the Earth's surface. The greenhouse effect, some of the infrared radiation passes through the atmosphere, but most is absorbed and remitted in all directions by greenhouse gas molecules and clouds. The effect of this is to warm to Earth's surface and the lower atmosphere. More than 1.5 billion tons of carbon dioxide are released to the atmosphere due to deforestation, mostly the cutting and burning forest every year. Greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and other gases. These gases are committed in the atmosphere and create the health reflective that keeps our planet air temperate at a livable temperature. But it's also a bad carbon dioxide, it's also bad. Okay, a warm and more moist atmospheres over the ocean make it likely that the strongest hurricanes will be more intense by the greenhouse gases. Also, global warming increases water vapor in the atmosphere. Here's a graph about the decades of warming. It has increased a lot until we're now. Okay, people most use carbon dioxide with 54.7% and other gases like methane uses 30% people and other gases 9.8%. Global warming recycled paper. Just 64.7% of 68 million tons of paper get recycled. Recycled paper is an economical option compared to wood as raw. Uh, recycled paper helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions that can contribute to climate change, and it takes 7% less of energy and water. Each 2,000 pounds of recycled paper saves 17 trees and 308 gallons of oil, 7,000 gallons of water, and thank you. Thank you, Claudio. Nice presentation. I'm going to ask you, Claudio, to go back to uh, the survey, the part in the presentation when you put, you said that you have some collected some data, but you didn't mention what it was, what were the questions, what was the data that you collected. Can we go back there, please? Yes, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I ask is if, are you recycling paper in your classroom? Five, yes. Five people say yes. And if the amount of paper saved is significant, if having a design for this purpose help you create awareness, um, one person say what, did not understand, and nine say yes. Mm -hmm. Do you recycle or use paper at home? 
three three persons say yes and two no. And here that teacher said a long summary about this one, the second one. That was teacher Reagan. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Thank you, Claudio. Tomas, do you have a, any questions for uh, Claudio? Uh, yes, Claudio. Um, what what uh, what can we do about paper? I mean, do you think we can we can stop using notepads and things like that, or or what else could we do so we don't use as much paper, or 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 it's just about not wasting it too much, or what do you think? You can use paper, but when you finish using it, you have to recycle it because some people may use it and make helpful things like I told you, toys of paper, lamp of papers, and other things you can make with right. recycled paper. Thank you, Claudio. Perfect. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Jennifer? Oh, yes, now I'm paying attention. <laughs> Claudio, what, what would you say to somebody who believes that global warming is not caused by human uh, behavior? <laughs> Can you repeat it again? I didn't know. What, what would you say to somebody? Because some people believe that human, that global warming or changes in the atmosphere are, are just cyclical, they're natural. What would you say to somebody who believes that nothing we do accelerates it or causes it? Um, yeah, I will say, I will tell them that yes, humans, we cause the, we're the principle that cause an atmosphere and make global warming more warm because we make carbon dioxide go to the atmosphere by cutting trees, cutting forests. So yeah, we're human, we're the principle making this with the Thank gas you. carbon dioxide. Thank you. We have the evidence, right? Yay. Yes, show the evidence. <laughs> Good. I have a question as a student, Claudio. Do you think we should keep going to digital um, tools for learning, or do you still think having paper for books, notebooks, um, physical textbooks is important? I know a lot of kids say it's easier to read a paper book, but do you think we should try to avoid using physical books if we're, we've got digital alternatives? Yeah, we should avoid it, but we can still use it, but for that is recycle it so we can reuse it again. But you can still use it, but it's better to avoid it because it's going to help. Okay. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Claudio. Let's uh, support Claudio. Really nice presentation, Claudio. And good job answering the questions. Thank you, Tomas, Jennifer, and Angela. We're going to continue with the next presentation. I think we can move contamination. It was supposed to be after lunch. So I'm going to ask Piero and Sofia Marun if they are ready to present because lunch is at 1 and it's 12.25. Piero, are you here? Sofia Marun, are you here? Yeah, teacher, I'm here. Perfect. Are you ready, guys? Give me just a second, they just arrived with a charger for my cell phone. Let me just mute here. Okay, guys, we are back into business. <laughs> okay, let me put the time. You may start. Um, good, good afternoon. We need to, well, you have to present Contamination and Recycle by Pierre and Sophia. Where, why are we doing this? Contamination is affecting our planet as well as the animals, as well as the humans. 
uh, we don't make a change with made too late. Uh, plastic pollution is contaminating the ocean and is killing the animals by eating those plastic and the humans by contaminating these animals. They are making kind of contamination, but the most important part is we need to make a change before it's too late. Why should people care about climate change and air pollution? Air pollution mo mostly caused by car cars, factories, and more is killing plants, which produce oxygen. Without plants, humans and animals can breathe. These two are mostly caused by the same thing. By polluting the air, ice starts melting and plants die. Climate change is affecting us and animals like polar bears with the ice melting. It's harder for them to find food also because of the ice melting. The ocean increases and can flood places. Why do we need to people to recycle? We want to attract people who are interested about helping us to do this change. We need to people to realize all the damage we're causing about there's something about we can do. Just by doing this, we are managing you cold health. We can recycle more clean beach, beaches, no more, no more cars as much, no throw trash in the streets or the ocean, basically no throw trash in much, much, we much, much more. Just by spending the, the world's just by spreading the world, we can make a change. Why do we need to protect our environment? Our environment is where houses and helps ecosystems grow and thrive. Without protect, protecting and taking care of our environment, we're putting so many lives at danger, such as animals, plants, and crops, and even our own. All the ecosystems that make up our environment are deeply connected. What is plastic pollution? Plastic pollution result means dumping the plastic waste into our seas and landscape around the globe. It's the globe contrasting the species and extraction of the oceans by the mass production or plastic is a key contribution to the climate change. How can we help people reduce plastic waste and reduce contamination? Reduce your use of single-use plastics. Recycle properly. Fact, participate in, in or organizations. A beach or a river cleanup. Avoid products containing microbes. Spread the word. A sport organizations addressing plastic pollution. Thank you. Before you go, could you go back to the last slide before the thank you one? There was yes. a link there and you didn't mention what that is about. Uh, yes, it's a link to donate to, um, to a global change, to have a change in the environment, to help the animals and help the seas, to have a, a climate change. Literally, it's a climate foundation to record money to help the environment, yes. Perfect, thank you. Beautiful presentation, really nice and well done. So, Tomas, do you have uh, questions for Sofia and Piero? Uh, thank you, Sofia and Piero, for the presentation. Uh, what would you say, uh, because we, we use cars a lot, what would you say would be the recommendation to stop using cars that much? I guess practice, practice more and like make it into more our own words. Sophia, I couldn't understand what you're saying. So what would be the solution to use less cars? Not um, use the car as much. Well, like 
practice more what we're gonna say, make, make it into more our own. Like cycling? No, um, wait. What was the question? Thomas, can you repeat the question, please? Because we, we climate change, it's also because we, we use a lot of cars. So what do you think would be good to avoid using cars that much? Like driving oh, to school, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess if the place is close, you could uh, walk there or use a bike and things like that. Mm -hmm. Piero, any thoughts about this? No, I think Sophia is our right answer to respond to that question. Okay, what about carpooling? Any thoughts about that? Do you know what carpooling is? No? For example, I don't know. Uh, let's say Sophia and Piero live really close by and also Samba. So instead of uh, parents having three cars because they're going to, Sofia is going to come to school, Piero two and Samba two, then they organize themselves. And for example, Monday, Sofia, dad or mom is going to take also Piero and Samba. So instead of having three cars, we have only one car that is being used that day. That's carpooling, just an idea. Thank you guys. Um, I don't know if Angela or uh, I, I don't see the teachers that are here present. I don't know if any teachers have another question or comment. I cannot see Jennifer. I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Jennifer, did you have a question? Is my microphone still a little up or can you hear me? Um, about what do you think would be the best alternative to using plastic? Did you hear me? I don't know. Yes, we Did can you hear repeat you. It was a little bit? Okay, uh, about about uh, plastics or packaging, which one do you think would be a better alternative? Yo creo que la mejor opción para cambiar el plástico sería usar materiales biodegradables para que se eh, o para que se hayan rápido el environment to help the environment to grow more y pueda y los animales puedan vivir en él sin tener que preocuparse por el plástico para que el material biodegradable se pueda degradar más rápido. Okay, thank, thank you, Piero. Anybody else, any other teacher or somebody else that would like to ask a question? Yep, okay. Thank you, Piero, Sofia, beautiful presentation. Let's support uh, Piero and Sofia, really nice and well done. Good job, guys. Guys, we're moving so fast. We are being so efficient. It's 12.35. We're supposed to go to lunch at one. Uh, we already moved one of the presentations after lunch. There was this one to before lunch. We still have time to at least have another presentation. So I'm going to ask Cassandra, cutting down trees, if you're ready, Cassandra, and if you would like to present right now. Yes. Teacher, I don't know how this passed right. so fast. <laughs> I know. So, um, can we put pin Cassandra so we can see her? Do I start, teacher? Cassandra, just, just a second, honey. I'm, I'm sorry. It's because I cannot see you. And I think Flor is, uh, no, it's uh, going to be Camila. Camila, can you hear me? Camila Hernandez. There is Sandra, perfect, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Flor. Okay, let me put the time, uh, Cassandra, and then you may start right now. Good afternoon, my name is Cassandra, and I'm gonna show you my Steam Fair project. Cutting down trees. Why did I choose this topic? 
Well, because I found it, it was very interesting to find what solution it would be. Why do we need trees? Trees provide us with oxygen, so if there's no trees, there's no oxygen, and there's no us. And the trees are homes to many animals. They prevent damaging floods, but somehow when there's going to be a new road built and there's a tree in the middle of the way, there's no other option but to cut down the tree. So what can we do? It is necessary to cut down trees for roads and houses. Okay, I think we lost Cassandra. I think she got, uh, she's frozen right now. So let's wait a little bit to see if she comes back. I turned off my camera thinking that maybe it was my internet connection. So let's wait and see if Cassandra can come back. And guys, um, this is something that we are familiar with. Technical problems, internet connection problems, <laughs> power shortage. But um, it was one of the topics, and I think it was uh, hydropower. That they mentioned that here in Costa Rica, especially, that you can hear light, lightning where Cassandra was. So probably it's related to that. Maybe it's a power shortage. She's back. She's back. Oh, I'm sorry, sure. There's a big bad storm. Yes, we could hear it. I said maybe it was the lightning. And uh, we were talking about the project of hydropower when they talk about this problem, the uh, power shortage that we have here in Costa Rica a lot. So can we put Cassandra back, uh, pin Cassandra, so we can see her? Thank you. And Cassandra, you may start sharing again. No problems. Uh, this happens when we are dependent of um, technology and the internet. Do you want me to okay. turn off the camera? Do you think it might hopefully minute? You have problems with the internet. It is not good. Um, you may turn off the camera, Cassandra. That's fine. So we, we need trees to survive, and so maybe if there is a tree cut down, we can plant a tree. How do tr can trees clean air? Toxins settle on the leaf of the tree or plant, and the stomata or pores absorb these and filter the air. Understand the balance. 15 billion trees are cut down each year, but we it's not a big rush yet. There are this big number of trees still in the earth on earth. Let's get to work. Can everyone plant a tree that was cut down for the house or the road? The answer is no because many people live in the city and they don't have room to plant a tree. So I'm going to, my experiment is to find a good way, so a good option for people who live in the city and can't plant trees. So if you don't have room to plant a tree, you can have house plants. They work. They clean the toxins from the air just as well or better than trees. But I ran into two problems. Many people who live in the city have a big schedule and don't have time to care or water plants. The second problem is 80 out of 100 people do not have plants in their house. They have plant house plants but they don't have them in their house 
So I found an easy clean air cleaning house plant, the snake plant. Don't worry, it's not going to bite you. Here's some data about it. It can grow anywhere between six inches to several feet, so it's not going to take up much space. It is one of the few plants that can convert toxins or carbon, di I mean carbon dioxide into oxygen at night. So snake plants can absorb toxins, cancer-causing pollutants, and carbon dioxide, and many others. The snake plant can act, act defensively against airborne allergies. They are easy to care for and require little water. These plants are very hard to kill. Data about plants that are easy to care for and are very cheap. Then I grabbed some scrap wood and started the measurements. Then with my sis little sister's help, I cut the wood for the shelf because I decided to do it with a saw because I thought it was a lot fun and it was very fun to do. Then when it was built, I started painting it. Then this is how it finished and I poured water to it and this was the result. My experiment results. When I poured the water, it started leaking from the plant like three minutes later. I put the on the lid from the, of the milk jug to, and it the leaking from the plant slowed down. It's probably maybe because of the air pressure. And so based on that experience, uh, the milk jug needs a lid. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. That was amazing. Excellent. <laughs> I love your project. It was a surprise for me, too, because I knew a little bit of what you were doing, but um, I love to see the pictures of you building this um, system. I forgot the name, like weekly, like what was the name again? Bi-weekly easy watering shelf. That one, I love it. I think you did an awesome, amazing job. Thank you, Cassandra, for, for sharing this project with us. Uh, Tomas, do you have any questions for Cassandra? Well, first, congratulations, Cassandra. That was actually very cool. I like the 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 be we the we weeks or or something by weekly something. Uh, I think it it was well built. It looked good, and it's a great idea. I am I'm, I'm someone that likes plants, but don't don't don't. Well, Marcela as well. She doesn't remember watering the plants often. <laughs> she killed a couple of plants actually in the front of the house, but that's a different story. Uh, I think yeah. I think it's very cool, I, and I think it it is kind of a a product that you can actually uh, think of in the future selling it you can build some more and then you can sell them pro probably a tree of life could use some of those and then some of your classmates could use some of those i think it's it was very cool i think i like the way how you stated the problem and everything but then you came up with a with a, some solution that at least it it makes us a little bit better in in help with the production of auctions and, and have a better place in our house as well so very nice job congratulations thank you very much Thank you so much for those comments. And uh, if you start selling this, probably when we come back uh, after vacations on the steam fair that is presential, I definitely will buy one because as Thomas said, I pretty much forget to water my plants. And I like the snake plant. And I like how you say uh, that you were not going to bite us, but it is a little bit dangerous for small kids. My daughter has one of those. And she also forgets to water plants, but the plants had survived, which is a really good plan for our household. Because now that you are going to give us that uh, salt water and system, that I forgot the name again, and I know Christian White put it in the chat for me. Let me see. My weekly easy watering system. Is that correct? Did Christian system? Oh, shell. <laughs> okay. Um, I would love to, to buy that. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, um, any teachers would like to talk or have a comment for Cassandra? 
I have I had a question about Jimenez said oh. she had go ahead Jimenez. And I put it in the chat. <laughs> okay, Angela, can you repeat, please? Okay, my question was, what did, Cassandra, what did you mean about the air pressure? You said it was probably because of the air pressure that when you put on the lid, it stopped dripping. So I wondered if you could explain that part again. Um, like, the, the water was supposed to drain very slowly so that the that it can last for two weeks until you have to refill the milk jug again. But when it doesn't have a lid, the water, the air pressure pushes it so much that the plant started leaking because the water was coming out so fast that it was like kind of overflowing. Okay, I get it. So the, the lid is on the top, is that right? It's, it, where does the, is the lid on the bottom of the jug or it's on the top of the jug? It's on the top of the jug. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Cassandra. Um, there is a comment from teacher uh, Jennifer, nice job. And I think Jimena also put a comment in there in the chat that that's why she had uh, succulents uh, at home because they don't need that much water either. Thank you, Cassandra. Really, really nice. What time is it, guys? Let me see. It's 12.50. I think we can uh, go to lunchtime now. Extra 10 minutes. Um, I think you deserve it. And we finish with a really nice presentation. So I hope to see you back, guys, exactly at 1.45. Okay, bye. Teacher. Please, 1.45. Have a nice lunch. Um, Tomas, are you going to be with us after lunch? Not sure. Okay, that's okay. I think okay. Walter is going to join us. Thank you, Tomas, for being here and uh, listen to the projects and help with some comments. Um, thank you again, all everybody should feel really proud of all the projects. Enjoy Bye. your lunch. Bye. Bye.